Hi, I'm Freedom Coach Barbie Armenta, and you're watching Brave Conversations with Barbie. And I am so excited today. I'm on location with Amy Evans. Um, we're going to be talking about um, a conversation that's near and dear to my heart about surviving the holidays with blended families and step families. And Amy is um, doubly equipped to handle this conversation. She is a licensed professional counselor and has her own practice is Amy Evans Counseling Group and she's also a stepmom so she um, can cover this for us from both angles so mm -hmm. I'm so excited that you're here today so why don't you tell them just a little bit about you before we get started okay thank you I'm glad to be here have this conversation with you it's mm -hmm. so such an important conversation because um, nowadays we have so many families that are blended that are step families and mm -hmm. so we want to have this conversation to hopefully give you some insight and some encouragement through the holidays. Mm -hmm. So good. I'm, um, I am like she, Barbie mm -hmm. said, I'm, I am in a step family. I actually mm -hmm. grew up in a step family as well. Um, I had a stepfather um, that raised me and I um, married my husband 11 years ago in November. So we're awesome. kind of on our anniversary. And um, I got two young boys at the time. Mm -hmm. um, they were seven and nine when we got married. And um, now they just turned 18 and 20, so okay. adults now. So um, it's mm -hmm. been a fun ride. I'm sure it's never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I know a little bit about having a house full of boys. Mm -hmm. um, I also have three boys of my own, and they are now older. They are 17, 21, and 27. And then I married um, a man five years ago who had a daughter, and now she's 22. So um, we have the big, beautiful, blended family going mm -hmm. on at our house. Mm -hmm. That's going on at our house as well. Mm -hmm. So I I know that any time with a blended family can have its share of challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, we dealing with um, what I heard someone refer to one time as the X's and the extras. Mm -hmm. You know, we um, have so many things on our on our plate with that. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, over the holidays, I think everything's just a little bit magnified. So mm -hmm. um, share with us some of the challenges that uh, maybe you all faced in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there are challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's funny that you say that um, exes and extras uh -huh. that we said, because I refer to my husband's ex-wife as my ex-wife-in-law. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> because I think it's I think you have to have the right perspective. Mm -hmm. You have to realize and accept that you're marrying not only your husband mm -hmm. and the children that he's bringing into the marriage, but that's also. Good his ex and even even some mm -hmm. of her relatives like yeah. i i'm in connection with like her sister you wow. know and i mean i could go into some crazy stories there mm -hmm. but i think if you if you look at your family as divided mm -hmm. that's going to be your heart and then everything's going to flow mm -hmm. that way from that division in your yeah. heart so you need to look at your family the big picture mm -hmm. of who your family is um, really so good. I think that's one thing. I think I mean, I think sometimes your perception can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, getting the right perception, and sometimes what affects our perception, and vice versa, is our emotions. Mm. So for me, that has been my biggest struggle, even you know, still ongoing struggle mm -hmm. of dealing with the yucky emotions. Yes, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with the um, I want things my way emotions, the selfishness and. Um, mm -hmm. the anxieties you know yeah. I mean I'm a recovering people pleaser <laughs> and with that mm -hmm. pattern there's a lot of anxiety about pleasing about fixing yes. and so that's an emotion anxiety fear things like that is really for me that has been a big challenge of just trying to um, deal with the emotions you can't deny them so you got to mm -hmm. deal with them but then find that right perspective to get past the emotions. Don't let the emotions yeah. lie to you and dictate mm -hmm. the direction of your family. That can be so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being the adult, mm -hmm. I don't always wanna be the adult. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, I love that you say anxiety is an emotion because I think we don't always realize that and mm -hmm. it can be as fickle as, as our emotions as well. I know um, I've also been that people pleaser and trying to fix everything and um, but really it's control mm -hmm. and we don't see it mm -hmm. see it that way so mm -hmm. I think that's um, really good to recognize I know 
that I was told one time that in the absence of information, I fill in with the negative. Mm. <laughs> and so just remembering what's true and, you know, that's, that's such a great example. Mm -hmm. So the other um, challenge that I wanted to mention too, mm -hmm. kind of going along with the emotions mm -hmm. is expectations. Yes. I think that's a big one. I think that's a big one no matter what relationship you're in is mm -hmm. and if, if we if we go into our step or blended family with this idealistic view mm. you know of what we expect what we want w the direction that it's gonna go you can just bet you're gonna fall flat in your face you know like you got to go in with um, realistic expectations and, and sometimes that may look like no expectations, <laughs> just being flexible sometimes with, um, you know, situations that come up mm -hmm. and, um, and, and just really working on um, your expectations. I do an expe expectation check with myself mm -hmm. um, and try to think about, I think it's really just getting out of our own brain, getting out mm -hmm. of that selfish mindset and trying to think of the others that everyone else that's involved especially mm -hmm. your children yes i mean they're they should be the priority um i mean i say that your marriage should always be the priority but i say that children should be the priority when it's in this type of situation because they're the ones being pulled different directions mm -hmm. they have this house over here with this biological parent and they have this house over here with this biological parent mm -hmm. and so just really trying to develop some empathy and understanding putting yourself mm -hmm. in their shoes yes walking in their shoes for a moment to think mm -hmm. about what are they feeling you know yep. think about their feelings instead of your feelings yes and it's hard because sometimes we think we are doing what's best for them mm -hmm. and that we think we think we are putting them first but when we really break it down you know it's um, one example of that for me was traditions mm -hmm. um, I had certain things that we did you know when I was growing up and I would try to force those traditions on my kids you know we're gonna do it this way we're gonna decorate the tree we're gonna have hot chocolate we're gonna mm -hmm. da, da, da. and that wasn't even that fun to them you know that mm -hmm. not they didn't like decorating the tree and stuff but they um, me having to have it a certain way yeah. made it not that fun for them. And then they had their own traditions, you know, mm -hmm. they, or the things that they saw as tradition that I was just doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they asked me one year, are we going to have Christmas morning bread? And it was like, what's Christmas morning bread? Like they mm -hmm. had saw that as this, um, me making monkey bread was this tradition that, that we always did. How could I not do that? You know, mm -hmm. and, and all those things I tried to force on them they weren't really enjoying but the there were certain things that I was just doing mm -hmm. and that's what became their tradition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know that was it was really a, just an awesome thing I know when um, I just had a conversation the other day with one of them we were talking about the first Christmas after we had gone through the divorce and he I can't remember exactly but he was sharing with me that he remembered happening and I said did you remember you got an iPod that year and he goes I did and I thought, oh, I was trying so hard. Yeah. You know, that was the part I spent money that I probably shouldn't have as a single mom and um, to get them this big gift so that I could compete with their dad. Mm -hmm. You know, all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't even remember getting it. Mm -hmm. You know, he mm -hmm. remembered some time we had together, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just a really important lesson for me of just not trying to force things. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think since we're talking about traditions and mm -hmm. the holidays being right around the corner, mm -hmm. um, that's something that's an important conversation to have. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe even now with your spouse before yes. you get in the midst of it because um, you may be one of those moms that likes to plan the whole month of December out and have all these fun mm -hmm. activities, certain times that you're going to go to yes. tree lighting or whatever it may be. and. Um, and so, you know, recognizing that there may be some old traditions that need to be honored, mm -hmm. you know, by your children, you need to honor them for the children. Um, but then in incorporating your own mm -hmm. new traditions, I think that's a balance that yes. you got to find, and especially around the holidays, because there's so many emotions, there's so much chaos around the holidays, um, busyness that mm -hmm. makes it chaotic that you, that you really need to, um, 
you need to think about those traditions and honoring mm -hmm. honoring the old ones but implementing the new ones as well mm -hmm. that's really good that I said honoring the old ones I think um, with anything that your kids used to do mm -hmm. you know of realizing that you know we might add to that and do things a little different but mm -hmm. um, but yeah honoring mm -hmm. what they already had is that's a really good word so so what advice would you have for people that are thinking about getting married and they're going to be in that blended or set family position mm -hmm. My first piece of advice would be preparation. I think mm -hmm. preparation is key to anything that we choose to do in life. Um, to be prepared is taking the path of wisdom um, and, and getting, getting some tools, getting some knowledge ahead of time. And so I know for it's worked great. My husband and I did our preparation, mm -hmm. counseling, um, before we were married and um, I can see now how it, how it's benefited us mm -hmm. and preparation um, I do premarital counseling now whether it's a premier you know, first time marriage or it's a remarriage and it it causes you to have those conversations that you don't have on a date <laughs> you know <laughs> and, and and there's there's some conversations that I get to facilitate with couples that really help them understand one another, mm -hmm. understand maybe backgrounds and traditions, yes. you know, because that is that is a big one. Um, how do you celebrate certain holidays and birthdays mm -hmm. and family gatherings? And so those are some of the things that a premarital uh, counseling course could do is mm -hmm. just help you have those conversations and give you some steps and some, some tools to be able to manage mm -hmm. those things as they come up and to just really accept each other's differences mm -hmm. and learn how to um, complement one another. Yep, that's good. All right. I think that is um, that preparation and having patience that can be mm -hmm. such a difficult thing to do, mm -hmm. you know, of just taking that time. And, you know, adulting is hard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it is. Sometimes we just have to say, you know, okay, I have to be the adult in this scenario. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you were talking about um, just that preparation ahead of time. I know with, um, with my now husband, when his ex-wife got remarried, he went to his daughter's new stepdad and he said, you know, you're gonna have something that's the most important thing to me. And so we need to figure this out. And it was so valuable because mm. they became great friends. They're mm -hmm. still friends today. Mm -hmm. And so when we go for, um, she's going to college or college graduation and, and you know all these different things, they have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And mm. so it's been, I've just got to kind of witness that mm -hmm. firsthand, what that looked like as now she's an adult child mm -hmm. and the relationship that they all have. Mm -hmm. And you know, she, had her stepdad from the time she was like three or four years old. Mm -hmm. So he's important to her. And mm -hmm. so it's great for for all of them to be able to have this great relationship. Mm -hmm. But And through the holidays, we will see that as ever, there will be times that we will all be together, mm -hmm. you know, and it works out. Yeah, so. I think that's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, we have to honor, again, I'm using that word. Mm -hmm. It's we, a good word. We have to honor the ex- mm -hmm spouse or the biological parent, yes. you know, because that is a part of your mm -hmm. now stepchild. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love, I love that he went and had that conversation. Mm -hmm. I encourage that as well. And um, the couples that I, I get to work with, like if mm -hmm. you guys can have communication, if there's four yes. parents and you guys have communication mm -hmm. and you co-parent, like you can really set up this child. Yes for success and, and just to really have confidence mm -hmm. and makes a difference in their self-worth yeah. if you if you do that. And so I think that's a another thing um, that um, I did with my kids growing up it, to try to honor around, we're talking about the holidays, honor mm -hmm. around the holidays was even just a little thing like taking them Christmas shopping for their parent. Mm, that's good. You know, I mm -hmm. remember going and buying jewelry for <laughs> Mm -hmm. for my boy's mom, you know, yeah. and like, that's not something I really wanted to do, but you know, again, setting myself aside yes. and trying to think of what was best for them. Um, right. And I know, I know that has left an imprint 
Um, oh, for sure. An imprint that mm-hmm. they're going to grow up, you know, and and it's going to matter to them because I know it did for me because mm-hmm. my stepfather honored my dad mm-hmm. growing up and he invited my dad over for Christmas morning. People think that's crazy. Yeah. But I remember it, it mm-hmm. left an imprint, which I think it has framed the type of stepmother that I have become mm-hmm. because yeah, of having example. that example of grace and, and just being inclusive with my dad. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, you know, when, when we have any kind of bitterness and anger towards our ex and we let our children know that, mm-hmm. you know, they're gonna remember, they're gonna, actually, it makes us look bad. Mm-hmm. You know, they're gonna remember those kind of actions, Absolutely. you know, of, of extending grace mm-hmm. and forgiveness. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've all made choices, you know, or some choices have been made for us, but either way, we're moving forward. And so now we're in this new relationship to celebrate it, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. without having to have that, that bitterness. And yeah, yeah. The, the, like I said the holidays just, you know, it's a time that we need to be focused. It's about Jesus, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that we need to be reflecting him. And Thanksgiving is, is about gratitude and when we can be in that posture of gratitude. So mm-hmm. but we wanted to make sure that we're um, not just sharing, you know, our personal experiences, but we want to give you some tools um, to kind of focus on as we go into this time of year. And the first one is really just putting our um, marriage first. You know, it's the, um, the thing is we're to raise our children to grow up and out. <laughs> that is the goal. And what's left is the marriage. And, but, you know, these are children, we're talking about children that have been through a divorce already. Mm-hmm. And so the best thing you can give them is to witness a healthy marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, so when we put our marriage first and we focus on that, you know, that's a great example. We think it's, you know, giving the kids the iPod. It's those mm-hmm. things that, you know, I know I've done and we think um, by taking their side or um, giving them things that we're, um, that that's the best thing. But when we Buying can show, their love. yes, mm-hmm. but when we can show them that we're stronger together and have that strong marriage mm-hmm. and kids need boundaries, mm-hmm. you know, Absolutely. so when they can see that, that y'all are a united front, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's really where this, the, the lesson and the strength and mm-hmm. that's where they witness God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I cannot agree with you more. Mm-hmm. I think marriage has got to be the priority, mm-hmm. um, always in every situation. Um, I mean, there's actually research out there that shows when the marriage is strong and secure mm-hmm. and has a solid foundation, mm-hmm. the family thrives. Yes. So it's an outpouring mm-hmm. from the marriage. So making that first is, is key. Yeah, and we're not always gonna re- agree. We are not pretending that we do this perfectly. Mm-hmm. We will not always agree, but it's showing that united front always mm-hmm. w- with the kids, you know, and there's a time in having open communication. Mm-hmm. You know, I think sometimes we say things and our first reaction is the selfish one, mm-hmm. you know, but this is about having a sacrificial relationship. It has to be, mm-hmm. but what looks like sacrifice really becomes a blessing yes you know god can bless us in a bigger way than when we just hold tightly to getting our way Mm -hmm. he can bless us so much greater when we let go and we sacrifice Mm -hmm. and allow him to to bless us through it Mm -hmm. so um the next one is just a right mindset you know it's just changing our perspective you know of just um i know for me when I started sharing the holidays, it was about not focusing on what I didn't have, mm-hmm. but just what but what I did have. And mm-hmm. so I'm not gonna have them on the 25th of December, so the 23rd, we're all gonna have a family gathering and it's gonna be okay, you know, that mm-hmm. it's not the on the day, but mm-hmm. it's just about that time we got together. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, what? perception is mm-hmm. what we make our reality, you yes. know? So if you've got a distorted, wrong, perception mm-hmm. you're I mean it just everything's just a mess mm-hmm. if you you want to um, you, you want to base that in truth you know mm-hmm. you don't want it to be based on a feeling um, any of the negative feelings that we've already covered here today and so perception is is important mm-hmm. yeah that's really good the other thing is being flexible Want to share a little bit about that? Mm-hmm. Well, I think flexibility is really important. I, th- I, I have learned. I didn't know until getting married and having a family how much I like to control things. 
how much I want everything to be, mm-hmm. you know, done the way I expect it, you know, the way I feel about it and everything, you know, and then we can become so rigid mm-hmm. and, um, and, and kids, there's no freedom in that. Kids can't grow mm-hmm. and feel free in that, that, mm-hmm. that, that makes a very, um, toxic environment mm-hmm. to, to be like that. And so um, you got to be flexible. I mean, you got to be flexible about the calendar schedules, um, about the the times that you know they're they're supposed to arrive at home, or or you know the the time they're supposed to um, meet you somewhere. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just flexibility in all situations. Um, you really it goes back to the expectations of adjusting those expectations. Mm-hmm. But if you if you are unrealistic and rigid about what how you expect things to go, especially mm-hmm. around the holidays, mm-hmm. you know, the holidays are going to be a time where you're going to be disappointed if you have unrealistic mm-hmm. expectations, you know. So if you plan Christmas dinner to be served at a certain time mm-hmm. and the kids haven't shown up yet and the mom's 30 minutes, hour late, I mean, like, you really have to, you have a choice yeah. In that instance, you know, how you're going to respond or be mm-hmm. reactive, you know. And so um, I think just becoming where you can bend and you can be flexible mm-hmm. is really important in all, in all these different situations we're talking about. That, that's good. It's always a choice. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to we're going to get our feelings hurt. We are going to get angry. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to get mad is what we do with that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sometimes you have to take a moment and step away. Yes. You know, I um just had a moment a few weeks ago, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I know this is fine, but my emotions aren't reacting the right way and I'm crying, mm-hmm. but I know I need to not be and just let me be. And my husband's like, well, what do you need from me right now? I'm like, mm-hmm. just give me a minute, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it'll be fine. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's just, um, you know, walking away, processing yes. it. You know, you had shared with me before about the closet mm-hmm. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I I'm a firm believer that adults need timeouts. Mm-hmm. It's not just a for your little child. Um, and mm-hmm. if you you got to be real with those emotions. Those emotions are going to be there, and you've mm-hmm. got to be real. But you need to go do it privately. I used to mm-hmm. in early in our marriage. I used to run to the closet, and that would be my little pity party time. <laughs> you know. And mm-hmm. so you know you gotta you gotta be honest, and you gotta get those out in the open. Um, but then, you know, you have to also prepare yourself mm-hmm. to respond in that situation. And I think prayer for me has been key. Absolutely. So I had my little pity party and then it turns into prayer. Okay, mm-hmm. God, I need you to show up. I need you to, um, to give me the right mindset and to mm-hmm. give me um, love. You know, mm-hmm. I need your love to flow yes. through me to to love um, my children, to love my husband, mm-hmm. and like, you know, just get back, going back to that perspective, you yes. know? I mean, when, if we don't go and deal with those emotions, I don't think the perspective can get mm-hmm. switched, you know? Yeah. So you gotta go deal, process, and um, get the right perspective so that you can then go respond. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's, it's, sometimes it's difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, lately I have been getting my marriage advice from the show This Is Us, mm-hmm. <laughs> and because it's so good. Mm-hmm. If you don't watch This Is Us, you need to just stop right now if you have to. Go binge, binge watch that because it's so good. Yes, but, it is. But um, on the first episode, Randall and his wife were, they've been debating this adoption issue. Mm-hmm. and. You know, he came to her and he said, you know, we're perfect together. He said, we're perfectly imperfect. Mm -hmm. He goes, but this is what we do. We make decisions together. And I was like, perfectly imperfect. Yes. Yes. That's okay. I'm good with that. I'm good with being perfectly imperfect. And um, Rebecca on the show said to her husband um, that she goes, if you, she goes, I am your, you're my husband. I am your wife. Um, if you have a problem, we will deal with it together. Mm -hmm. And I was reading this article, the director of the show had said, 
that that was sort of their um, mantra of the show mm -hmm. that they've got stuff to do mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. that they're gonna do it together and I mm -hmm. thought that just needs to be the mantra for life because we do have mm -hmm. stuff to do mm -hmm. you know God has a purpose and a plan for our lives and for our marriage you know mm -hmm. he's got stuff for us to do yeah. and we're stronger together mm -hmm. you know and when we're focused on him and so I just thought that was a, such an important life lesson that mm -hmm. I was gaining from yeah quality TV yeah <laughs> yeah you know take it where we can get it right you know this is it's not always an easy road you know and mm -hmm. um, my husband made such a point when we were dating that he wanted to make sure he loved my boys mm -hmm. and that he took that time to get to know them and he recognized that if he didn't that that could come between him and his daughter and he would resent them and I'm so grateful for that leadership and you know it's never too late just know that it's mm -hmm. never too late no matter where you are in your um, relationship that it's never too late right. for that um, as you talked about just reconciliation or um, you know I'm a firm believer in counseling so we're going to share your information but just taking that time whether it's maintenance it's premarital mm -hmm. it's maintenance mm -hmm. or if it's fixing things before you know they get um, mm -hmm. before you end it you know I think mm -hmm. too often when we have that fight or flight instinct we're flying these days yeah. you know we're not staying in allowing let God fight for your marriage you know yeah. when when you're weary so um, why don't you share um, your information mm -hmm. so that everyone knows where to find you mm -hmm. so. yeah so um, my website is aecounselinggroup.com mm -hmm. um, you can find me on social media I'm on Facebook and it's Amy counseling group and it's Amy AMI mm -hmm. and I'm also on Twitter which is Amy AMI underscore Evans and so that's the best way to follow me and I post articles about some of these topics we're talking about today um, and other just encouragement for you so I do work with marriage um, and I help like we've already talked about premarital couples um, build strong and secure marriages but I also work with um, marriages um, that are remarriage second or third marriage um, so helping those um, get prepared for their second marriage and if there are children involved blending or if their step family just giving them the right tools and um, and just really instilling hope because like you said it's never too late mm -hmm. if you okay. are watching us today and you feel like you're there's no way you could ever have any of what we're talking about and mm -hmm. it's gotten ugly and messy in our situations mm -hmm. too and like you said you know mm -hmm. we've not been perfect um, but it's never too late um, if you have the right resources, if you have um, maybe a counselor, someone that can guide you and give you, uh, give you some tools and give you some insight that's going to help you grow, um, first your marriage, because that's first, mm -hmm. and then the family, um, then you, you can do this. You can have a family that thrives, and you don't have to be just surviving with each other, but okay. you can actually, um, I love even just the show you mentioned this is us mm -hmm. like just the implication this is us mm -hmm. imperfect yes. messy but we're gonna love each other and we're that's gonna right. fight for each other together and so that's mm -hmm. part of that's my passion and what good. I do and working with marriage in whatever situation um, you find yourself in is just helping you fight for your, for your marriage and helping mm -hmm. you fight for your family that's good that's good. I love that you said that we need to thrive mm -hmm. in the holidays because that's what this is about. We do not want you to just survive. We want you to thrive during the holidays. And just a reminder, it's just that putting your marriage first, mm -hmm. um, you know, keeping that right mindset, keeping your perspective in the right place, taking a minute when it's not to, to kind of come back and know what's true. And then that just being flexible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when we let go we think when we're trying to control everything that that's going to keep us from um, losing our mind <laughs> during mm -hmm. the holidays mm -hmm. but really it's it's a letting go you know mm -hmm. i think when i hear the scripture be still and know i'm like who can be still you know but yes. when we do when we do what we can do god's going to show up and do what only he can do mm -hmm. and um, i think that's what we need to allow him to do during this holiday season and um i think that's great you know i'm going to post um, Amy's information so that you can find her um, we would but it's not a conversation without you so if you're watching on YouTube or if you're on Facebook or on rightcombination.net on the blog 
we want to hear from you. So leave us questions, leave us comments. Um, let us know what, um, how you're surviving with your blended family mm -hmm. or questions or struggles that you might have because we are all in this together and we want to help you with that. And um, in addition, I have some promotions for my, um, for my coaching for November and December that I would love for you to join me with. You can, um, I'm going to post a link below. It'll be for um, at rightcombination.net. But I'll post a specific link that we, if you want to work together during November and December, not just on thriving during the holidays, but also setting you up for a fabulous start to your 2018. So um, I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, remember to put your brave on.